So welcome. My name is Stephanie Capust. You can just call me Stephanie. You don't have to worry about trying to spell my last name or anything like that. Um, I'm a full-time faculty member here at Grantham. So um, if you took MA 104, you probably had me. You're probably going to have me for pre-calc if you have to go on to pre-calc. Um, most people have me for um, a lot of their math classes. <laughs> So, hopefully you like the way that I teach. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to share my screen. I have a PowerPoint that I use for all of these, and um, I go through the PowerPoint. I share the PowerPoint afterwards. The live sessions where I'm going over topics, I have a stylus and a tablet, so I actually write on the screen like a whiteboard. So, that way you're getting the lesson in real time. You can stop, you can ask questions, that sort of thing. But for tonight, because it's the first day of class, I just want to make sure you guys can navigate your way around the classroom. Um, I am going to make a separate week one introduction video about what you're expected to do for week one. Um, I didn't have enough time to do that today, so um, I'm probably going to have to even do that tomorrow and email it out tomorrow. But you'll at least have an idea of how to navigate the classroom and everything. Um, today. So at least you'll have something. Let me just make sure that I have, I want to make sure I have the right classroom open so that I can show you guys the classroom. Okay, and perfect. Okay, I'm in the right mode. So I am going to start sharing my screen. And just if you have a question, just click the raise hand button or you can type your question. Um, and it gives me a little notification, so then I'll check and make sure that I'm, you know, looking at the questions. So, you guys are in college algebra, which I'm sure many of you were not looking forward to, because I know, I, I know people don't like math. I used to dislike math myself, so I totally get it. Um, but I'm hoping that you'll find as it starts making sense that it's not so bad. That's what happened to me. I was, it, once it started making sense, I'm like, actually, this is kind of fun. So <laughs> that's my hope that at least a little bit of it, if not all of it, probably not all of it, but at least a little bit will end up being fun. So um, I'm going to start off with just showing you how to print slides, print PowerPoints. So that way, if at any time you want to print these out for your own notes, you know how to do so without like wasting tons of paper. Then I'm going to go through why you're taking college algebra, why is it required for a lot of degrees, um, what you're going to learn, how it's useful. Then navigating the course, showing you around the classroom where you can find things. Then the textbook, telling you about the textbook and all the resources that come with the textbook. Then uh, um, online calculators and graphing calculators because those you're going to be definitely doing some graphing and so knowing where you can find these online for free will be really helpful. And then course expectations, basically the big things that I'm expecting from you guys through the course, like late penalties and that sort of stuff. So that way you have all of that up front. And then when I make the week one video, then I'll go into the more detailed expectations for the discussion, like the specific assignments. So that's the plan. Um, this is probably going to take half, half hour to 45 minutes because there is a lot of stuff. If you don't feel like you have to stay on the whole time, because again, this is, um, it, it is recorded. So if you have something else that you need to do and you have to pop off, that's completely fine. It, the whole thing's recorded. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of stuff to show you guys. So it, it, it will take a while just to warn you up front. So to start off with printing slides, when you go to print on PowerPoint, um, there is a option that says print full page slides. So I'm going to just kind of zoom in there. So when you click that, you get this options up above. It defaults to full page, which is a slide per page. But you really don't need one slide per page. So you can change it to two slides per page or three slides per page. And that will um, use less paper. You can even change which slides you print out. Um, and so that's if you want to print them and you want to like write notes on them or something. Um, some people, what they do, they will watch the live session, then they will print the slides and watch the live session or watch the recording, and then um, take notes during the recording. So whatever method works for you. Oh. 
So to start off, uh, before I really get into things, I just want you to know that we are having a different model in the math classes than some of the other classes where we have an instructor and a grader. So I am your instructor. I'm doing the, these live sessions. I'm holding office hours. I can do one-on-one -on -one videos with you. I'm going to be in the discussion forum. I'm going to be emailing you, doing all the outreach. I grade the discussion forum. I am your person to ask questions. I am your instructor. But there is a grader who will be grading your quizzes and exams and then also grading the assignments and leaving feedback. So um, we have a grader so that way I can spend more time reaching out with and interacting with you guys and actually doing teaching. Um, so if you have questions with something that's been graded, if you don't understand something, if like the feedback left or you feel like there needs to be more feedback, let me know and uh, just send me an email and tell me the specific assignment in the question and then I can take a look at the feedback, see if I can give you additional details or if not, I will reach out to the grader and say, hey, um, can you leave, you know, take a look at this a second time, maybe be a little more specific about your feedback. Um, so that's how it's going so that I do grade the discussions and I will sign those with my name, but um, they grade your quizzes, exams and then your assignments. So it's just a little different model, but, um, you know, I don't think you'll really notice a difference, honestly. So why college algebra? Why is this something that everybody has to take? Well, let's first take a look at what is college algebra. So college algebra is considered the first math course that someone takes in college. This is... Um, Basically, it's there are all these rules, you know, about accreditation that says what a college can teach, what um, the lowest level courses they can teach, what subjects are in those courses. You know, there's a lot of regulations, and one of them is that college algebra is the lowest level math class for college level work, basically. We do have classes lower than this, but um, we have to be very careful about how we phrase them so that they're allowed under the, all the rules. So college algebra is supposed to be the course that you go in and you start off with. Um, I understand that some people have never taken algebra, so it's a little difficult to start in at that, mark, at that part. So it is considered introductory um, because it's a 100 level class, but you are expected to have some algebra knowledge beforehand. So um, just so you know, that's sort of how it's built and how it's designed, but that's why I am here, so that if you've never taken algebra, you can still succeed. The purpose of this course is to give you what you need to succeed in higher level courses that um, either are business related or degrees that rely on some of this information. So um, some courses that you need this class for are pre-calculus, trigonometry, calculus, statistics. Um, there are engineering courses that rely on this, co this, the knowledge here. There are computer science courses. There are other courses that require this course because you need the information. Usually this course is really important for those that are going into business, engineering, computer science. Now, if you're under the old catalog, this course was required no matter what your degree was. So if you were in criminal justice, you had to take this, medical billing and coding. Um, we have changed those rules, but it depends on when you enrolled. So some people still are in the old catalog and are required to take this course. So um, for you guys, I'm going to do my best to, you know, show you how algebra is still useful, um, even if you're not in business, engineering, or computer science. This course is designed to basically take algebra that you would have learned in high school and then extend it further. So um, that's just, that's the, 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 how you're coming into this course. So that's like what the course is built upon. So you might wonder, okay, so I, I have to take this for my degree. There's reasons that I have to, because I'm going to need this in some other classes, but how can I really apply this in my life? So um, this is not an exhaustive list. There are tons of places where things can apply to your life, but this is just some things. So if you are in business, you might want to predict the sales of a company, maybe somebody else's company, maybe your own. 
Maybe you want to find break even points. You need to sort of analyze how your business is doing. A lot of times you have to make charts. If you're trying to raise money, you'd have to have sort of, sort of proof that you're going to be successful and using algebra and using math to back that up is a really powerful tool. So algebra can be used for those things and we are going to be looking at some of that in week two. Uh, the week two discussion is actually going to be about predicting sales of a company using algebra. Banking. So your interest that's calculated on bank accounts and how bank accounts figure out, or even credit cards, not just bank accounts, but how your interest on a credit card are calculated. All of that actually uses a formula and a formula is algebra. So we're going to actually look at that in week seven. We're going to look at a formula. I think it shows up a little bit before week seven as well, but in week seven, you'll really look at that formula on how interest is calculated. Sports. So you may not know this, but there is math behind sports like football and baseball. Now, you may know there's math behind baseball because of the movie Moneyball. That's a lot of statistics. But actually, um, there are math behind things like football and the way that a football is thrown, how far it goes, all of that. That actually is there's an out, there's a formula, an equation that you can use to predict how far it's going to go based off of its speed. And um, that's algebra. So we're actually going to be looking in week five. We're going to do an example with baseball, but it's, it's going to be doing algebra and showing how that connects to baseball. Bills. So if, you need to if you're trying to figure out, oh, how did the, you know, why is this, how much my bill is calculated? Um, you know, what are the formulas that they use to calculate how much tax you have or fees or anything like that? Um, there are some companies where they average or like if you're heating, sometimes they do averages instead of your actual usage. So um, a lot of bills you have to use algebra for. You may not, you may be doing algebra not even knowing it. But uh, one specific example it, that you could use algebra is figuring out how cell phone bill is calculated. And we're going to be doing that in week six. So we're going to show how you can use an equation to determine what your cell phone bill would be if you bought a new phone. And you can also use that equation to see if you're being overcharged by your phone company, if um, they're charging you too much. So um, that's an interesting use of algebra. Science population growth, radiocarbon dating, pH, a lot of science is based off of math and based off of algebra. So those particular things are going to be looking at in week seven. Then criminal justice. For those of you who are taking in criminal justice, a lot of people think, oh man, I'm not going to need math. Um, I can guarantee that is not true because I had a conversation with Susie Towsey, our criminal justice professor, last week about how much math and that you guys need. <laughs> you do need algebra. You do need some, you need like there's algebra to, for ballistics and a whole bunch of stuff. Um, one example is determining when somebody died. You know, how many hours ago was that? That is a formula that we'll see in week seven. Um, but there's actually a formula that you can use to figure that out. Healthcare. So um, in the healthcare field, there's a lot of things with math. You may be doing it in your head, but you might need to know, well, when do I need to administer a drug? You know, like I, I gave it two hours ago. How do I need to know when I need to give the, the patient another dose? So there's an equation for that that you can use. And that's, again, also in week seven. Um, week seven is my favorite week because it has the most uses. And then um, computer science. And if you're doing any programming, you're writing functions. And functions is an algebra concept. Um, college algebra is the study of functions. So this whole course is basically going to give you stuff that you can use in computer science. Um, a lot of things when you're working with memory, you have to worry about running out of memory. Where is it stored? And all, a lot of that involves math, especially because you have to think of things in different bases. And so you might have megabits. And mega traditionally means, um, I believe that's one million, but uh, it's like a million bits, but a million in a computer is not exactly one million. And so you have to, um, it's a, I think it's two to the sixth power is in a computer for mega. So you have to do some conversions there. And um, there's actually, if you, if anybody here is in computer science and has to, one of the Python courses actually requires you to write an equation for BMI. So there, there you're using algebra in your Python course. So 
Um, I'm going to stick to computer science with week four because that's where we really talk about functions, but you will be using algebra <laughs> in those courses as well. So hopefully this gives you an idea that algebra shows up a lot more than you may think or may have, you, you may not have even realized that maybe you're not solving equations all day, but you're using the concepts and you're using the ideas behind algebra. And hopefully you'll see that we're going to be doing a lot of real world applications. Um, so other things, algebra teaches you a lot of skills and these are skills that can be used for anybody. Um, it doesn't matter you know, what field you're in because in order to be successful at algebra, you need to start thinking critically. So um, you do improve your critical thinking skills. You have to pay attention to details because the symbols, all, every symbol means something and the order of things means something. And so um, it teaches you paying attention to details. And along with that, a lot of people say it teaches you patience. Because some problems can't be done in two steps. You have to take several steps in order to um, solve it. So you have to take your time. So patience is another thing that algebra can teach you. Um, organization skills. Um, that's something because you need to make sure everything's easy to follow so that you can follow it later if you're trying to study off of it. Uh, problem solving skills, logical thinking, like what is my next step? I did this, what next? Or this is the equation I have. What, what does that mean? What do I need next? So there's a lot of skills that can apply to any, anything that algebra teaches you, even if you're not solving equations all day. I have this really great link on um, why math, basically. So it goes over some of the reasons why math is something that's required, why it's a gen ed. So I recommend reading that just so you have another perspective. Um, it's important to go into this course with a positive attitude. I know a lot of people are not looking forward to it. They might have been avoiding math. They hate math. But studies have shown your attitude affects your performance. And so if you can try to go in a positive, try to put positive skill uh, spin on things, you will be more successful than if you go in already like with a negative attitude. So that's why I'm trying to, you know, if you can see where this might be useful, that can help you appreciate or at least have a different perspective on a course, something a little more positive so that way you can be more successful. So are there any questions so far? Okay. So now let's get into the big meat of this, navigating the course. Oh, uh, I see. Okay, Latasha, if you have a question, you can either turn turn on your microphone or you can type it in the chat box. Okay. Um, will we be able to? Um, will you be able to um, send us that link again? Yes. Yeah, I can definitely send you that link, and um, I think I have that website also in the supplemental materials, but I will actually make a note to make sure that I send the link to you guys. So I'm going to write that down right now. Are there any other questions? No. Okay. Okay, so I've got that written down about sending the link out. So um, here's a screenshot of what you see when you log into the classroom. And you may notice that it looks a little different than some of your other courses. So the first thing is that I have set it up so that your first page is the announcements page. That way you don't miss anything. Um, I don't find it useful to go to the course homepage. I think it's much more useful to f see the announcements up front. So, that's the first thing. Second thing is I did modify the menu bar on the left. I changed the colors and then I just rearranged things. So um, I am going to go into detail about how I rearranged things. I did it hopefully so that it makes a little bit more sense and it's easier to find things. But this is the main page. I just kind of want to explain some of the things going on on the page when you first log in. 
So um, when you come in, you see that there's this thing that says sign up for announcements and reminders, and then it says like remind at the very bottom here. Um, so remind is an application that you can have on your phone. You can also use it on the web. And it is basically a way for me to send you text messages and without having to get your phone number and without you having to get mine. Um, I had the phone app installed and so it comes in as an app notification, sort of like a regular messaging system. And so you can contact me through Remind this way. Um, and this, this is how I'm gonna be sending out reminders. So a lot of people have already signed up for this. And so you probably got a reminder five minutes before saying, oh, hey, don't forget I'm having this, here's the link. Um, I'm gonna be sending out the PowerPoints through here. I'm gonna be sending out YouTube links through here, just kind of short little announcements. Um, so you don't have to sign up, but um, this is something that is helpful if you want to have that um, that that connection or get more immediate help. Okay, Heather has a question. Some of the links have come across throughout this course so far. Give me an access forbidden error when I try to click on them. Can, if can you tell me specifically which links are giving you issues? If it's the live session survey link, you do have to be logged into your Grantham Gmail account in order to access the survey. Um, I know that for sure, but if you could give me a, which ones are specifically causing problems, then I can check those out. So while you're typing those, I'll um, continue explaining Remind and wait for those to show up. So um, if you want to join Remind and get notifications, then you can um, click the join class link. If you want to get text reminders, you do have to give them your phone number. Otherwise, it will default to email or um, you can have it go to the app. Okay, Heather says, the links to the live videos are forbidden. The direct link to this video was the first time I was able to get it open. An example link in the first discussion is forbidden for me to me as well. Oh, that is interesting. Okay, I'm going to investigate that. I'm gonna just write another note. I am not sure why that's causing problems. I will look into that. Um, Sample link in discussion and live videos. Okay, and how are you had you to click on the actual tabs on the left to discussions to actually access it? Okay, so I'm gonna actually bring up the class so I can make sure that I understand. So um, are you saying when you're in the weekly content? Is that where you're having the issues? Because if I scroll down um, and then there's the discussion. Okay, so when I click it works. <laughs> so, um, okay, I'm gonna have to look into that. I'll have to see which section numbers, what sections are you in? The number that's in brackets here that's your section number. So if you can tell me which section you're in, then I can see if it's just your section or if it's, you know, if it's maybe something on with your logins or something, because this one seems to work. Okay, 10, 258. So let's just test that out right now. Okay. So I'll go to weekly content. Week one, week one discussion. Okay, um, it worked for me. So if you guys could email me separately with your GIDs and the section, then um, I'll see if I can get with IT to figure out what's going on. Because, I don't know, that seemed to work. And if you have screenshots, that would be helpful too. Click on the very bottom where he posted. 
Um, okay, Heather, what do you mean very bottom where I posted? Like, do you mean like here? Okay, so that's, okay, so click here. And then, okay. And that link's not working for you. Uh, I see the problem, okay. And that didn't even take me where I wanted you to take. Okay, I will fix that. Um, if there's any other issues, let me know. There's, I, when I'm building these things, I'm like copying and pasting and I probably copied the wrong link because I build these in HTML um, because Blackboard doesn't allow me to do a lot of fancy things otherwise and it can get really messy. So um, I will fix that. This, the link that I'm talking about in the discussion is actually in the supplemental materials and tips for studying math and time management tips. So if you open up any of those, um, those are good tips. That, that's basically where I was trying to send you guys. So if you go through the supplemental material, then you'll be able to find the same things because I have time management tips and other things. But I will make sure that I get that fixed. Thank you. Okay. So back to my PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, so um, this is the beginning when you when you come in the class, and so you can join Remind if you want. Not a requirement. Um, basically, if you don't join, you'll still have the benefit because all the reminders will show in this class it, right in the beginning here, and so you just scroll through here in order to see more of what I've been sending. And so you'll have access to them even if you don't join the class. But you won't be able to send me messages through Remind if you don't join. And then uh, to get to the rest of the announcements, you have to scroll down to see the announcements. I email every single one of my big announcements out. So. Um, if you don't scroll down, you'll still have a copy in your email. That does go to your Grantham email account. So I recommend that you add that to your phone because it's a Gmail account essentially. So you just add another Gmail account and put in your Grantham email address, and then you can start getting that on your phone. And you can do the same thing with Google Hangouts. Then you can start chatting with me through Google Hangouts on your phone. Um, and that way you don't miss any important emails that might be sent out. I try not to send more than one email a day because I don't want to overwhelm you guys, um, but there is a lot of information, so <laughs> you want to make sure you have access to all of that. So um, the menu bar, I said that I've rearranged it, and so um, I've got, actually, you know what, I can just skip this, let me just pull up and... I'll just go to student preview mode so that we can see it like you guys see it. And I can just zoom in and, and show it that way. Oops. Come on. Okay. So this way I'll just zoom in so you can see this. Okay. So I've got the instructor page here. On the instructor page, you can find my bio, my office hours, and ways you can contact me, my email, my phone number, all of that information. Um, next is the syllabus. So this is where you find important information like the weights of assignments. And um, so I am going to pull this up. I'm going to view it on the web here. It gives you the ISBN of the book, so you should have ebook access. It goes through with what you're going to be doing each week. Uh, the grading policy is the important part. So this class is set up differently than a lot of yours as far as grading goes um, and weighting. So um, this class falls into the engineering department and a lot of engineering courses heavily weight your quizzes and not so much discussions and assignments. So your quizzes are important. Um, but assignments do help you prepare for the quizzes, so you still want to do those. But I do want to make sure you know up front what the, the grading policy is. So for um, this course, it's been set as discussions 10%, assignments 10%, quizzes 50%, 
Um, and then your midterm and your final are 15% each. So I just want you to be aware of that so that you, you make sure you're focusing your attention on what's important. And then if you scroll down, there are estimated times how long it, um, we think, you know, this is a ballpark estimate, how, many, how long this work might take you. So some weeks, 10 hours, some weeks it's like around 16 or so. So um, that can help you with your planning if you're not sure how much time to plan. Of course, if you have not taken algebra before, you might have to take more time um, because you might not have, or it might not be fresh in your head. So these are just approximations. Um, so next, I've, there's this Connect Now with a Live Tutor link. So I didn't move that one from where it is, but everybody has access to tutor.com and you get four hours a month and you can request more time when you run out. So if you run out of your four, four hours, that's not the end of the world. You can request more. So if you want somebody that can chat like I am, you can choose voice chat capabilities. I recommend instead of typing your question that you attach a file because I've seen a lot of people type their question and either they leave off important information or they type it, the math in wrong and then they get the wrong answer and then they're, they're upset when their assignment is wrong. So it's best to attach a file and to either download the assignment or take a screenshot of the question so that way it, you, it says exactly what it is. And then you just hit connect now. You can also schedule tutoring sessions with your favorite tutors and there are practice quizzes and the practice quizzes don't count towards your tutoring time so you can take those as much as you want and those are on various topics. So that's all available. Um, now I have to figure out how to move, get out of here. Okay, because I'm all zoomed in. <laughs> oh, come on. Um, there we go. Okay. Course expectations. So I'm going to talk more about the course expectations um, after I uh, go through the navigation of the textbook, but there is a link to them right here. So you can check those at any time. Weekly content. So all of your content is right here. The weekly content, your ebook, discussions, assignments, quizzes, and exams. So I recommend that you only use the first three. So use the weekly content so that that's where everything is. Um, the ebook and then discussions. I would just recommend so you don't miss anything. Always submit things to weekly content. So you would click there, go to week one. And then you want to make sure you scroll all the way down. So you have to add your ebook to your dashboard. Uh, this takes you to the ebook to the right sections. Videos, textbook videos, you can click here. Um, tutorials, click there to get to the discussion. There's an ungraded practice assignment, so you click there to see what it is. Excuse me. Um, another tutorial on how to submit your work. And then to see what the assignment is, you can click here and to actually submit the assignment, you would click here. So just make sure you scroll all the way down so that you get to the bottom so that way you don't miss anything. And um, I'll talk about my grades later once you guys actually have things to look at and things that are graded. Now I reorganize a lot of things by adding this resources section. So this is where all the helpful stuff is. So the first one is this live sessions and instructor videos. So this is where I'm going to be posting all of these videos. So up here is a link to subscribe to my YouTube, which obviously no need to subscribe to yourself. <laughs> it's my YouTube, but I post all my videos on YouTube. And if you want to get notifications through YouTube, then you can subscribe and set up for those notifications. The nice thing about being on my YouTube is that you can see that I have lots more uh, videos available. I actually have my YouTube channel open right now, maybe. Um, I don't know why that's not, I was just using it, okay. So I've got tons of videos. Um, I've got videos for pre-calc, I have videos for MA 104. Oh, now it's refreshing. So if you need some pre-rec videos, um, there are tons of videos. And so you can even look work ahead, you can search for videos. If I actually go to my channel page, 
Um, I have playlists. And so if you're, you know, I have a playlist for MA105, the August term. I have interesting math videos, a whole bunch of stuff. So um, you can subscribe, see what, what videos I have, what playlists I have, and that can give you some more, um, more help. And you can see what else I've got. Um, so when you're joining a live session, you could bookmark the link that you're on right now because this will take you there each time, or you can right click and say copy link address and bookmark that. Or you can just click this button every time and that will take you to here, which is Blackboard Collaborate. If you want to see previous live sessions, so you click here, so that will open up a folder. And so this is from the August term. Once I finish this recording and have it uploaded on YouTube, I'm going to replace it with the most recent one, but you have it if you, you know, wanted to work a little early. And then I've got videos. These are all from previous terms, and then I'll be adding in more videos. So if we go to week one, I have videos for simplifying exponential expressions, which is P.2, simplifying radicals, which is also P.2, factoring polynomials, which is P.4, P.5, simplifying rational expressions, and also in P.5, multiplying and dividing rational expressions. So I have lots of videos already, and I'm going to be adding more. So um, for like, let's see, I'm looking at my calendar. I believe at one o'clock on Sunday, I am doing P.3. So if you notice, I had P.2 and then I went to P.4. So I don't have any videos on P.3. So one o'clock on Sunday, I'm going to have a live session where you guys can attend, see me teaching live, ask questions live, and that will be on P.3. And then I will add it in here. So. I'll be adding them to this list. Some of them, some of these videos I might redo because I didn't like them. Some of them I'm like, okay, it's good enough, you know. But so these are all from previous terms teaching the material. If you are not one who's good at reading the book, I actually recommend you watch the videos first and then use the book as a reference. Uh, yes, all of these live videos will be posted in here. So this video that I'm doing right now will be posted just outside of the folder. Just re it'll replace the course introduction here because this one says August, so I will replace it with October. And then they'll be posted in the, the correct folder. So you'll have access to all of these. And if you subscribe to the Blackboard app for your phone, it actually notifies you when new things are added to the course. So then you'll get a notification that there's been a new video added. So then you'll have access to that. But I wanted to make sure that you have all the videos I've done so far for previous terms, so that way if you wanted to work ahead, you can. So that's in live session recordings. And I also have this Google Calendar so that you can see when live sessions and office hours are. So you can click on Agenda, and then you can plan. So 1 o'clock, I'm going through Section P.3. I have not planned beyond week one because I wanted to make sure people had a chance to do the survey so I can try to fit, find the best time that people are able to attend. So I will plan on getting the rest of the live sessions for the rest of the term planned out once you know I've, I've had enough time to look through the... Um, that actually I think is in the wrong color because that's supposed to be... That is MA 104, so that is on the wrong calendar. So I, oops, I'll have to make a note of that. And I have that on the wrong calendar. That's MA 141. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's October 3rd. That was from last term. Never mind. That is right. Okay. Very confusing when you're continually teaching classes. <laughs> I just finished the August term that ended yesterday, so it's, it's a little confusing. Okay, supplemental materials. So these are things that I did not make, but um, are, you know, these are like links to websites or other videos, other YouTube videos. So I already showed you guys the tips for study math and the time management tips. There's math symbols and notation, if you're not really good with that. Uh, these are some videos that I made, so I did make those. Some good math ch uh, channels, and then I have them through um, weeks. And then this is a really cool video. So there's tons of things. If you prefer to not even touch the textbook, there's pr probably enough information and videos here that you can be successful. Then tutorials. So 
I have tutorials on navigating Blackboard, basically how you can see your feedback on quizzes and assignments, because that's a question I get a lot, how to submit assignments, how to know when new material is added to the course. There are tutorials on typing up equations. Just let you know that is not required. And then there's also a tutorial on how to download Office 365 for your computer if you don't want to use the web to access. Um, then we've got Cengage resources, equation editor, those are more tutorials. And then the send email, this is new. This allows you to send emails to me by clicking all faculty users or select users. So you can click there and then um, you can pick somebody in the class that you want to email and send an email. So if you want to email your, your classmates or something, you can do that. Otherwise, you can email me by clicking the, the faculty. So that's new to the course. And OK, so I just let's skip all of those slides. I basically went through all of those. Okay, so before I start going into the textbook, are there any questions about navigating the course and kind of where you're, you need to find things? No, I'm good. Okay, and I don't see anybody else typing anything, so the textbook. So um, you want to make sure that you have your textbook added to your dashboard. So I just circled the number here. Make sure you, this is based in the week one of content so you can follow those directions and it should work. We've had no problems recently with that. I have this video. Uh, this is on my YouTube for navigating the textbook. And um, so if you want to know how you use the ebook, I recommend watching this vid video. I'm not going to play it for you here it's um it, I'll, I'll post the link actually i'll make a note send ebook tutorial out okay and heather is there a way to print the textbook or order one so i believe you can print a certain number of pages of the textbook if you prefer a print copy um, you might be limited to seven pages Sometimes you can rent a physical copy of the textbook through Cengage, which I think is through Chegg. I don't know how to do that. I know some people have gone to Amazon.com and ordered the print textbook. So there are options to get a print textbook if you want. We just only provide the ebook, so that would be something you would have to pay on your own. Um, and Howard and William, do you guys have questions? No, Howard, it said you raised your hand. You can rent it for $7.99. Okay, William, did you already rent the textbook? And if you did, can you tell me how you did that? Because I've had students ask in the past, and I didn't know how to how to tell them. I didn't know what the answer was. <laughs> so... <laughs> okay, so you haven't rented it, but it is on the website. Okay. So I guess check out the Cengage website and look into renting the textbook. Because I'm not a student, I don't see the same Cengage website you guys have, so I don't, I can't even like try to find it because it, it says, oh, you're faculty, <laughs> so. So um, I will send this out. Um, I've got a note to myself. I've got a big long to-do list for you guys. <laughs> um, so using the textbook. Oh, okay. Howard, you just try to submit your discussion. You do not have the appropriate privileges to perform this action. Okay, Howard, if you can take a screenshot and email that to me, and then I will try to troubleshoot with you uh, that with you later so because so we've got i've got another live session at six o'clock so i've got 15 minutes i've got <laughs> so um email me with a picture of the error you're getting and your gid section and then i will we'll try to troubleshoot with that what's going on there so um using the textbook so 
you're probably never had to actually use a math textbook before. <laughs> so what I recommend is if you are one that prefers to read from the textbook, there is a success organizer to take notes on each section. It's basically PDFs that you can download and print, and then they're guided notes for you. Those come with our textbook. So there's a website for the textbook, and if you click on this link, then you can access that. You can download all the PDFs and then use those to take notes. What I recommend when you're taking notes is to practice problems before you move on to the next section because math does build upon each other and so you want to do a section practice, section practice. You don't want to read six sections at once. So the ebook does give you answers to all the odd problems. There are step-by-step -step solutions on Calc Chat. So I have the link here. It works out, shows you every step to the odd problems. And then there are also videos on some of the problems that are on CalcView. If you don't have time to practice problems, but you still want to do some practice, the checkpoint exercises in the textbook are good practice because those also have solutions available to you. This is the textbook's website. So, um, you know, I would, I would definitely bookmark this and I'll make sure that I send an email. Um, I will definitely do it by email with all the resources, with all the links as well. And so when you log on, this is what you see. And so you've got solution videos to the checkpoints, topic-based videos, the pre and post test tab has practice tests that you can use to help study. The success organizer is where the note-taking PDFs are. Then you've got Calc Chat, which has solutions to all the odd exercises, and they show step-by-step. -step. And then Calc View has uh, the videos to, all, to some of the odd exercises. So there's tons of resources on the website. So if you're one that likes to learn by video, there's tons of videos. If you like to learn by seeing things worked out, you can look at the worked out solutions. So additional resources, you're definitely going to need a calculator. So um, if you don't own a calculator, there are some online calculators completely free that I recommend. Desmos is a really great one. It also does graphing. Web 2.0 Calc. And then even Google, if you just type in calculator into Google, it will pop up. So these will have everything that you need it, to be in this class, you don't need anything fancier than that. And we will be doing graphing in the class, so I recommend Desmos for graphing or GeoGebra if you prefer that for graphing. Both of them can do graphing. Desmos is my favorite because it's um, a lot easier to understand and figure out how to use. It's very intuitive. And fun fact, I actually met the CEO of Desmos um, this past weekend when I was at a conference. So that was really neat. I'm like, I've met this guy. This is pretty neat. So <laughs> I was really excited. Actually, a lot of us were, at a, it was a math conference. We we're all pretty geeking out about this, this guy who created this calculator. Um, so those, I would bookmark those. And if you want some tutorials on how to learn how to use the graphing calculators, there's some here. So uh, to finish up, course expectations, the big things that you need to know. If you've taken MA 104 from me, then these are going to be very familiar. So the university late policy is 5% per day. So I follow that policy, but if you email me ahead of time um, or, you know, and let me know, heads up, it's going to be a little late. This is why I usually give extensions usually by a couple of days two or three days and then um, I will often make the late penalties less so instead of losing five percent per day maybe you'll learn lose five percent per week um, so but that's provided that you let me know and you communicate with me um, I do allow resubmissions of all assignments. There is a 5% penalty for doing so, but if you got, say, a 10% on an assignment and you resubmit and get 100, that's a huge jump. Uh, you're With a 5% penalty, you'd get a 95 instead of a 10%. So um, assignments are allowed to be resubmitted, 
And that's partly because the way the assignments are graded is with no partial credit. So it's really easy to make one small mistake and lose some points. So that's why I allow resubmissions. Um, there are programs that will do algebra for you. You can; Those are great for checking your work, but don't use them to do the work for you. If you use those on any, any graded work, if there's any evidence of that, um, you will get a failing grade on that assignment because you're not demonstrating your understanding. You're just having someone or a computer do the work for you. And there are discussions where you do have to do some research. And so um, if you do any research, you need to explain it in your own words. You need to summarize, no copy and pasting. You need to make sure you have your references. So um, I don't allow plagiarism. That's a university-wide thing. Plagiarism is not allowed. But I just want to make sure you're aware that no copy and paste from websites, basically. You need to be explaining it because that's how you show that you have learned something. So assignments, the class says that only Word documents are allowed, but that is not true, or I allow more. So you can also submit, I don't know why this is so far to the left, but you can also submit photos and scans of your work. So if you don't want to spend hours typing your work, you can do it on paper. Um, just make sure that it's dark enough to read, it's not blurry. Um, Make sure all your pages are in order, your problems are in order, um, make sure everything's labeled, it's easy to find your answers, and do make it a single file. So if you do a photo, in order to make it a single file, you can either put those photos in a Word document, there's a website, jpeg2pdf.com, that can create a PDF from pictures, or there's a phone apps where you can take photos and then it turns into a PDF and then you can upload it that way. So um, just so you you know, you don't have to type up, you don't have the math. You will in some of the discussions, but as far as assignments, you can take photos and scan in the work and that's completely acceptable and that will save you some headaches. Discussions, so discussions have a 75 word minimum. Your main posts are due by Sunday night, and um, the biggest thing that I see people miss are the two reply posts to classmates. So do make sure that you're replying to your classmates, that you have a minimum of two replies. They need to be substantive. I understand that's a little harder in a math class. Um, so we try to, each discussion has suggestions for replies, and if you follow the suggestions given in the discussion prompt, then your replies will count as being substantive. So if you're struggling with that, see what they're suggesting you to do on replies. Okay, so this was a lot longer than I had hoped, but um, you guys had some great questions. So I've got six minutes before my next one <laughs> that starts up. Do you guys have any questions in the next six minutes before I um, start talking about week five for the September people? Okay, and I don't see anybody typing anything. All right, so thank you guys so much for joining. And if you do have technology problems, please email me um, with like screenshots, your section number, your, your name and GID, so that can help me figure out what's going on. I have several things on my to-do list that I'm going to be doing tonight when I probably at 8 because I've got... Um, the next two hours booked, but um, I will be doing that, trying to, if not tonight, it will be tomorrow morning for sure. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining live. I really appreciate that you took time out of your day to do this. And um, hopefully you'll find that this like back and forth asking questions and stuff is helpful, especially trying to learn math online. So um, I'm going to end the recording I'm going to turn off my microphone and everything um, until the next one starts in five minutes. So you can just close your tab where you're at. That will log you out. And um, hopefully, I mean, I'm looking forward to having a great class. Hopefully there's no more technology issues. We'll get those straightened out. But, um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy your next, your, the rest of your Wednesday. And I will talk to you guys again. So.